This is approval of the minutes. Yes, Barbara. Oh, you were raising your hand. Not that you would ever have an issue with the minutes, but I thought I'd check. Okay. Anybody else? Have a motion? If, yes, Dave. One correction. Okay. Uh, page two. There was nobody that made the motion. I think it was me. Nobody listed on that first motion. All right. Got that. Other than that. As amended. Would it be accepted? Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. And the minutes. Uh, the only correspondence I believe we have is zoning practice July 2004 and zoning practice October 2004. Is that it? Okay. That was easy. First item of business is uh, the Johnson Scott Scout House site plan amendment request an amendment to the previously approved site plan to realign the front walk, eliminate a sidewalk along the side of the building, and replace Rosa Ragosa to be planted on the eastern side of the parking lot with two maple trees. Um, I would remind the board that if it is anyone's wish to substantively discuss this request, since it's on the consent agenda, we would need someone from the board to ask that it be taken off. Other than that, um, it would be ready for a motion. Yes, Dave. I have a motion for the board to consider. All right. Be it ordered that based on the plan and material submitted and the facts presented, the application of E.F. Johnson to amend the site plan approval for the building located at 1231 Shore Road, U22-81-82, to realign the front walk, eliminate a sidewalk along the side of the building, and replace Rosa Ragosa with two maple trees be approved as a consent agenda item. So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, that is approved. Next item on the agenda is also under the consent agenda. Blueberry Ridge Subdivision Affordable Lots Amendment. Uh, Joe Fristacci is requesting an amendment to the previously approved Blueberry Ridge Subdivision to change the affordable housing designated lots from lots 2 and 12 to lots 10 and 13. Uh, again, this is under consent agenda. If anyone wishes a substantive discussion, there would have to be a request to remove it from the consent agenda. I have a motion. Okay, Dave. Motion for the board to consider being ordered that, that based on the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joseph Fristacci for an amendment to the previously approved Blueberry Ridge subdivision located off Mitchell Road to change the affordable housing designated lots from lots 2 and 12 to lots 10 and 13 be approved as a consent agenda item. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay, that is approved. Uh, the next item under all business is the request by U.S. Cellular for site plan review to construct a 180 foot tall telecommunications tower located off Bowery Beach Road. Um, the application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations and 19-8-12 Tower Performance Standards. Uh, just as a note, if everyone remembers, we did hold a public hearing on this application at the last meeting. So if I could ask the applicant to come up and... If you can tell us where we are, any changes since 
we last discussed this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Ed Shaw, and I work for LCC International, and they're an authorized agent for United States Cellular. Um, if you remember at our last meeting, there were uh, two critical items that we were not able to resolve or address at that meeting, and one of them was a buffering issue. The first critical item that we had was we had not received a final determination from the FAA stating that a 180-foot tower being placed in this tower overlay district would not require lighting. That was a condition uh, that I had heard all along that we made, had to make sure that it would not be lit. I have included in the package that final determination from the FAA um, that uh, states that no lighting would be necessary for a 180-foot tower at that location. On that FAA determination, it says 190-foot. Uh, the purpose of that is to put a grounding rod at the top of the tower in case any lightning comes along and hits it to shoot that right into the ground and not uh, affect the equipment. The second item that I had on there was the resource protection permit we had not applied for. Um, there was a small area on the leased, uh, there was a small section of the leased area, approximately 300 feet. <clears throat> Put this one up first. This area right here is the actual tower overlay um, district. And inside of that, there's a, there's a pond area here and a wetlands that was delineated uh, by uh, wetlands folks. And we determined that that wetlands went into the upper northeast corner and affected approximately 300 square feet of the area that we had leased. Uh, at that meeting, one of the things we were going to try to do was to rotate that in order to get out of that wetlands. When I met with the surveyor and the engineers out there, to rotate that entire area would have required um, that we go back and um, take care of the way that the water would go if there was uh, drainage. It would require basically for us to go back through the entire um, original design and redo it to make sure that the water would drain properly. So what we decided to do was to actually cut off the corner where that 300 square feet was and not use it and not uh, disturb it in any way. So we had leased 100 by 100 foot area thinking that would be more than enough to place all the carriers when we were there. We've come up with, this, adjusted the site plan, so I'll show you on this one, so that we do not go in that corner and we still have the room to do what we had originally intended on doing, and that is to place the buildings for six carriers to be there. This one is a further back. This one's a close-up. This green line here delineates where the wetlands are. We have taken, instead of having the fence go up into the corner like we had before, we've cut it off and have put the notes on here so that we will not go into that wetland area whatsoever and still we're able to put in the buildings that we were asking originally. We wanted to get the six carriers, and I've shown them on the plan that we can fit the buildings in there and not utilize that area, and it has no negative impact on us, and therefore we do not require a resource protection permit. Um, the third item that I had on here that we were going to do was um, when we had gone on the site plan, uh, site walk, there was some additional buffering was requested by some members of the planning board. We had met with a forester and a landscaper and had come up with an, uh, a plan to put some of the existing shrubs in that area to relocate them and put them on the plan, but they were not on the plan last month. I have included them on the plan this time. I've highlighted them in red here. And that is 15 of those small trees will be placed in these areas along here to help uh, with the buffering from the road as cars go by and look in toward where the tower might be. Uh, there was one fourth item that we really didn't discuss along the way here that back uh, when this originally started, we had mentioned that if we had put a um, tower in the southern Cape Elizabeth area, we were going to let the public safety go on that tower and allow them to put some equipment at the base of it. I've had a couple of discussions with Neil Williams, who's the chief of police here, and uh, we have agreed um, verbally and are in the process of putting together a written agreement that will be good for 15 years for him to place uh, up to two antennas at the top of the tower up at 180 feet. He'll put those whip antennas, they're about three inches around and about eight feet tall. 
That'll be at the very highest spot on the tower. We will install them on the tower and install the coax that goes to both of them down the tower. And on this drawing here, I put a blue square and a red square, but originally we were going to... The police department's equipment comes in a cabinet that is weatherproof. It's like a refrigerator that you open up and you work on, but uh, Neil was telling me in the past that sometimes in inclement weather, they have to work on the equipment and some water does get in there and it's troublesome. So we've agreed with the uh, uh, police chief to place a small building, 10 by 10. We will purchase it and install it at the base of the tower for him to be able to put his equipment inside of that building with a light switch and a small plug-in for a heater. And that will enable um, them to get inside out of the weather when they open the cabinet and keep it safer that way. We'll also have the electricity that provides the power for that equipment be on generator backup for our generator. So if the power goes out there, our generator will keep our equipment going and also keep the public safety equipment going. So that was just one additional thing that I had promised the town council and the planning board back some time ago. I wanted to make sure I followed through and that we did do that. And those were the four items that I had planned to bring up this evening, but I'd be happy to answer any other questions. Okay. It is now. Okay. Questions? Barbara? Two quick ones. The, the trees that you're moving in, about what size are they? When we talked out there, we were talking anywhere from two to four feet. Uh, this time of year, of course, when we do it, we won't be doing it when we install the tower, but as soon as springtime comes and we can do that, um, we had taken a look. John Green is a property manager out there at the Spray Corporation, and we looked around, and there were several trees that were in the two to four foot area in the surrounding area that he felt would be better to transplant those and place them there rather than go out and purchase some trees and bring them in. Uh, as you may know, some of the uh, uh, what's the word? Deciduous trees are tasty to the deer. So if we could find some that had made it up to two to four feet in that area and had not already been eaten, we could probably move them around and, and less likely to be destroyed by the deer after we brought some new ones in. And the other question that I have is, in, in reading your package, there is something <clears throat> in here which I think we should make public so that you have approval for it, that you want to use gray cable because it's inside the tower rather than the black, which I'm assuming is more expensive. Yes, and actually it's, uh, it's not so much that it's more expensive, it's just a special order that we'd have to item, uh, a special order that we would have to do. And I've noticed on the two towers that are in the other tower overlay district, when you use the gray towers on a tower that's a guided tower that doesn't have the cables enclosed inside, it does visually look better to use gray cables. But in this particular application with the monopole, all the cables are run on the ground and then up inside the tower all the way up to where the antennas are. So it seemed like it wasn't really necessary for them to be gray. There'll only be about two and a half, well, maybe up to five feet of the cable will be showing at the top of the tower where the antennas are. But it'll be coming out and going straight across to the antennas. There'll be no horizontal view, uh, yeah, no vertical view of the cables. It'll just be coming across the platform to the antennas. So it didn't seem like it was necessary. But if the board would rather that I use gray, it's, it's your decision. Oh, it's the black. You, you, it's the black one. I would rather use black, but if you want me to use a gray, I will do that. No, I just okay. thought that it should be. Thank you. And that's the only reason why I brought it up. Dave. Is the agreement that you mentioned with the uh, chief of police at all referenced in these plans? Um, no, it is not. It's, Maureen, is that something that we should reference here? I don't know how we can do that. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that's anything that would come within the approval. I mean, the the little building that that's already on here. Yeah, the, the building's on there. The agreement to position the one or two. Did you say one or two antenna? Up to two <coughs> antennas. That's all he requires. <coughs> but there are footprints for. The, the, the question building. is, the 10 by 10 building that you're going to be installing for public safety, is that on? plans right now? Yeah, originally I put the blue square in here because we thought we were going to get six carriers on here and we could put the fire and safety over here outside of that area. But to get the cables from here over to the tower for the entrances on this side of the building, it just really didn't make sense. So what we decided to do is take one of the 10 by 10 concrete pads that are on the plans that was for one of the six carriers and utilize that 
for the public safety building, and they will put that right on top of the concrete pad, and that will be used for public safety rather than one of the carriers. I've had several discussions with U.S. Cellular, and um, they, they're committed. There'll be no charge for this 15-year agreement for us to do this work and to give them that building. It's going to be something as a public, um, uh, public, I don't know what it is. It's something that we agreed to do. There'll be no right. charge. We'll deliver the building. Well, we certainly appreciate that. I know that helps the, the town. Um, when you were talking about the FAA before, yeah. did you say that there will be an additional 10-foot lightning rod on the top of the tower? Usually they're about five feet tall, but what we didn't want to do is the tower will only be 180 feet, absolutely. Okay, that's my feet. question, all right. The, the actual physical, it's a, it, look, it almost looks like a brush that you'd scrub something with. It's round, it goes up about five or six feet, and it sets right on top of the tower, so that if the lightning does come by, it'll hit that and go straight to the ground rather than affect the antennas. So um, that's placed right at the top. It's only two inches in diameter. It's really not seen most of the time by anybody. But we didn't want to get into a situation where we had only a 180 foot limit and then we had to go back and ask for five more feet later. So we put in for 190, but the tower will only be 180 feet tall. Okay. How about the, uh, the eight foot whip antennas? Are they mounted off to the side, below the actual top, are they? I know that. Um, Ground, the, the grounding rod at the top will be about six feet, like I said. The antennas will be mounted at the top about eight feet right beside them. That was the other reason. Originally, we were going to put the fire department and public safety's equipment further down on one of the locations yeah. utilized, but we thought we can put it right at the top this way as long as it's not over eight feet long. So they can place that right at the top of the tower, put their eight-foot antenna up there and still allow us to be at 177 feet, but we'll still be up near the top. We have to come down a couple of feet. Will, will they be higher than the lightning arrestor? Um, and they would attract the lightning themselves if they were, wouldn't they? Oh, you're right. You're right. Um, I, have a glass. I apologize. Um, we can get any size lightning rod that we need, and we will make sure that the lightning rod that is up there is higher than the public safety's antennas. Absolutely. I apologize, that's not my specialty, but you're absolutely right, and that should be done. <clears throat> Dave, I had a couple of questions. Um, under that exterior lighting that you say in, on your first building, you'll put a sensor on the light. Is yes. there a way that each of the other buildings as they're built will have a sensor in there rather than the light burning all the time? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, Power supply to this site, how does it come in? The, you have the emergency generators. Yes. That's just backup power? Yes, it is. And uh, where do you get the rest of your power? Yeah, what we will do is uh, on the plans here, it shows CMP's pole number 65 across from uh, on 77 there. We will come overhead across with 77 and then down and up here and over to a location where there'll be a uh, uh, right here on the, actually it shows it better here. Here's where the, the last overhead pole will be located, right inside the compound. And then there'll be something that we refer to as a meter bank that will have up to six uh, electrical meters on there, one for each carrier as they come and put their own equipment in. So there'll be, an, there'll be six meters that the central main power uh, person, when they drive in, they can look through the fence and read the meters. And then power comes from this meter bank to each individual um, carrier's building, and then they pay for their own individual electricity. And that's 800 amp services usually brought in in order to hold that. So if anybody drove by and saw a light on there at night, there's either somebody in there or something set the light off, right? Correct. And, and it should be that the, uh, that the sensor would be set such that it would have to be inside the compound for the light to come on. I think there was mention of it in Maureen's um, notes that I read that each uh, one was going to have a sensor on mm -hmm. it. Yep, I saw that. But there's no reason to have any lights on at night there. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Mr. Shaw. The, I've, uh, from what I've seen in there, we do have a... Uh, summary uh, of 
all the issues regarding approval under the site plan standards and i will note for the record that each of the issues is summarized here and it appears to meet all of the requirements for the site plan standards and for the tower performance standards so i certainly would have no problem uh, approving this for the motion sure <clears throat> A uh, motion for the board to consider finding of fact number one, U.S. Cellular, represented by LCC International, is requesting a site plan review to construct a 180-foot tall telecommunication tower located off Bowery Beach Road, R6-29, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations in section 19-8-12 tower performance standards. Number two, the transmissions from the new tower must not interfere with existing transmissions. Number three, the application substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-8-12 tower performance standards. If the Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of U.S. Cellular for site plan review to construct a 180-foot-tall telecommunications tower located off Bowery Beach Road, R-6-29, be approved subject to the following condition. Number one, that a statement of non-interference by certified engineer be submitted to the code enforcement officer prior to issuance of a building permit. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? None opposed. That carries. Thank you. Uh, next issue on the agenda under new business is Grover Road subdivision amendment and private access way permit. Leland Murray III and Stephen Murray requesting amendments to the previously approved Grover Road subdivision to reconfigure existing lots, build a public road, and construct a private access way for lot one. Uh, located at the end of Grover Road, and this is reviewed under amendments to previously approved subdivision plans and section 19-7-9 private access ways. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to recuse myself. My okay. son was involved in the design of this project. All right. Thank you, Dave. Somebody has a different... Good evening. My name is John Mitchell of Mitchell Associates, and I represent Skip and Steve Murray here this evening. Um, this application is for two, um, two items. The first is for an amendment for a previously approved subdivision uh, to reconfigure some lots, and the second is for a private access way uh, to serve lot 11. Uh, the location uh, Grover Acres is uh, between Fowler Road and Grover Road. This is the shop end and Fowler Road. Uh, the land area consists of 1.7 acres and is completely surrounded by single family residences. Uh, and it's located in the Residence A zoning district. Uh, the land generally slopes in a northerly direction in this in this direction here, uh, there is a, a drainage, intermittent drainage swale that uh, flows in a northerly direction. Also, mainly from a culvert that's under uh, Fowler Road um, in the water uh, is in the ditch and drains across Mr. Wilmot's property onto the gravel pit and uh, ultimately discharges into the Spring River. As you can see, uh, the existing subdivision, which was, uh, I believe, approved in 1959, contains a 40-foot right-of-way uh, with five 
uh, approved lots. What we're proposing is the extension uh, of Grover Road from where it dead ends currently, um, an extension of Grover Road to approximately 445 feet, uh, terminating with a turnaround, hammerhead turnaround designed in accordance with the town standards. The two lots on the uh, southwest side of Grover Road will remain um, as they are, or as they've been approved, with the exception of a reconfiguration of the hammerhead. Um, the three lots on the east, easterly side of Grover Road will be reconfigured uh, from three lots to two lots. The average lot size of the four lots is 12,000. 300 square feet. Uh, public water will be extended from where Grover Road ends now uh, just to provide service, water service to the four lots. We are proposing to put, locate a fire hydrant at this location, uh, which will provide fire service to the four lots as well as enhancing the fire service for the existing uh, residences on Grover Road. Sanitary sewer will be accomplished with on-site disposal systems. Uh, the soils are excellent in this area. Um, and in your packet, uh, Alfric has designed uh, each of the four systems and the HHP 200 forms are included in your packet. Underground electric telephone and cable will be extended from a utility pole in this location here to provide um, uh, service to each of the four lots. There'll be a transformer, a single transformer located at this point here. Uh, stormwater management, uh, this road is being designed in accordance with uh, the uh, public road standards for, uh, for a public road, rather. Uh, we are proposing to um, design the storm drain system with an enclosed system with catch basins and storm drain pipe along the roadway um, and discharging it at a level lip spreader at this point here, which is actually on Mr. Wilmot's property. Um, and the Murrays have been negotiating an easement with Mr. Wilmot. Uh, there's a draft copy of it in your packet. Um, and we've also uh, submitted a letter of intent from Mr. Wilmont agreeing to this easement. Uh, that's a quick overview of the, of the proposal. Uh, I would like to just review a couple uh, discussion items. Uh, first of all, that, um, Marines' comments, uh, we generally agree with all of them, um, and they will all be addressed. Uh, number three, the drainage easements, like I, as I mentioned, uh, we've included the draft copies of the easements, and they are in the process of being uh, signed. In terms of uh, Steve Harding's comments, again, we agree with uh, most of them. Uh, with the exception of, uh, there's a, a comment that, uh, let's see, it's number five. He is recommending a catch basin uh, at this point here, which is at the low point of the roadway. And be, due to elevation, um, we it's impossible for us to locate a catch basin here and tie it into our system. Uh, but I talked to Steve today, and he has asked us to look into alternative methods of handling or uh, accommodating stormwater, which we will. Uh, and the only other one that we, uh, number eight, uh, he's recommending a stop sign located here. Uh, I checked with Neil Williams today, and he's recommending not putting a stop sign there's really no need for a stop sign at that point since this is a driveway. So those are the only two. The others are all technical in nature and uh, will be addressed at the, uh, at the next submission. 
and uh, reviewing the completeness checklist. Uh, there are two checklists, one for the minor subdivision review and the other for uh, private access way. Uh, the only partial uh, is a field survey uh, certified by a licensed surveyor. The, the survey has been done, it was done by Owen Haskell. Um, it wasn't stamped um, in our submission package, but it has been stamped, and we'll include that in our next submission also. Uh, there's a question mark on number eight. The survey has been done to an accuracy of one foot to 5,000 feet. Uh, and the only other one is, is the last one, 18, which is labeled pending, and uh, that refers to the easements, which are in the process of being signed. Okay, questions from the board. I would just remind the board that the first item we need to review tonight is on the issue of completeness on both the applications. So if we could limit our questions to that issue, uh, if, if you, we have any. Mr. Mitchell, I just saw a note on here that it's correct that there won't be any need for any uh, maintenance uh, agreement for this. Right. Um, we're proposing to offer the road to the town as a public public road. Okay. There won't be any requirement for maintenance, private maintenance. Any other questions on completeness, Barbara? No, I have a motion for the board. All right. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Leland and Steve Murray for amendments to the previously approved Grover Road subdivision to reconfigure existing lots, build a public road, and construct a private access way for lot one, all located at the end of Grover Road, U20-7, be deemed complete. Be it further ordered that the above, nope. I'm sorry. Um, let's do that motion first. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Um, next issue, I believe we would all want a public hearing on this, and uh, so I guess we'd have to schedule a site one. We so chose, so we could think about that as well. Um, the weather is not very conducive, but I'll leave that up to you if everyone wants one. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to note for the board that apparently there was um, a resident of Grover Road that did come into the office this afternoon, was interested in the project. Uh, there was some confusion in one of their questions, and they were going to watch tonight, so if they're out there watching. Yes, this project is going to be accessed off of the existing Grover Road, and that was a little confusing as to what answer they got this afternoon. So I just want to make that clear for anyone who's interested that, yes, these new four lots will be accessed off of the existing Fowler Road. Grover. Uh, Grover Road. Grover Road. Grover Road. Now you know why there's confusion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Dave. John, excuse me. I I'm happy to do a site walk. I'm just not sure one's necessary here. This is a previously approved subdivision. There, the plan appears to be mainly to reconfigure three of the lots into two, but I'm happy to go out there if, if others feel that it's necessary. I would defer to everyone else. So, anyone feel a great need for a site walk on this? Okay. You want to finish your motion then, Barbara? Be it further ordered that the above application be tabled to the regular January 18, 2005 meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. So that's tabled to the 18th, and we'll have a public hearing. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, um, the next item under other business is the BA Wetland Zoning Amendment. Town Council has forwarded to the Planning Board a request to consider an amendment to the zoning ordinance that would reduce the RP1 buffer from 250 feet to 100 feet for properties in the BA district which are served by public sewer under section 19-10-3 amendments. Um, we have discussed in workshop uh, the text of the uh, recommendation to the town council. Um, we would have to have a public hearing on this before we made our recommendation. Uh, but the issue, I guess, today is, to, is, there, is there anything further we want to do with the recommendation? Or do we want to table this to the J January 18th meeting and hold a public hearing on our uh, recommended amendment? Yes, Barbara. I, I have a question. I did have a call from somebody about this who was concerned about about it because of preservation of land. And I just wonder, I think we talked about this before, um, a notice will go in the Cape Courier, is that correct? And then we can call anybody that perhaps has contacted us and let them know. Yeah, I actually put it on my list for tomorrow. Is that I will be drafting an article for the Courier. Hopefully it will be published before this date. And there will definitely be something also put on the town's website. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. So any issues on the substance of and text of our recommendation, which we went over last time? And we have a motion, I, Dave? I might say I was also contacted by somebody about it, so there's apparently some interest in the issue. Well, I'm sure there will be, and that's why we're having the public hearing. So Dave? I have a motion for yeah. the board to consider. Be it ordered that based on the materials and facts presented, excuse me, I have the wrong memorandum. Thank you. The BA District Wetlands Amendment is tabled to the January 18, 2005 regular meeting of the Planning Board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Okay. Also under other business, the undersized lots amendment. Again, the town council has forwarded to the planning board a request to consider an amendment to the zoning ordinance that would reduce the minimum buildable lot size for lots served by public sewer to less than 10,000 square feet. The draft amendment would reduce the minimum lot size from 10,000 square feet to 7,500 square feet and require that lots comply with the mandatory affordable housing provisions, section 19-7-4, and will be reviewed in compliance with section 19-10-3 amendments. Um, again, uh, we discussed this at length at workshop and have discussed the uh, text of the recommendation uh, recommended amendment to the zoning ordinance. Um, we have chosen to make that recommendation and couple it with a requirement that the lots comply with mandatory affordable housing provisions. I believe we thought about that at length and um, therefore tonight again if we have changes to the text of the recommendation we should discuss that tonight. Otherwise, um, this is another proposed amendment that we would table to the January 18th meeting and also hold a public hearing. So with that, David, sorry. He was before me. I, I, yeah. just, I just had a point of clarification. Just so I understand, we're putting this on the agenda with the proposed language we have here right now, but that doesn't, we haven't 
um, we're not wedded to this particular language at the time we hear the public hearing. Someone may propose that we change it or, or at the time we have the public hearing. Um, that basically all issues are on the table, both for this amend this proposal as well as the Yes. Okay. But if if we wanted to make any changes to what we submit for the public hearing, we should do that now. That doesn't mean that it, it right. can't change after that. No, I you're just, right. I'm hearing what you're saying, and I, I, I'm just trying to I'm just make sure that it's not it's not a either or. Once we get to the public hearing no. stage, we may ultimately keep it, change it. But your right. and your point is that if we want to change it now to put on the uh, public hearing, Correct. we have that opportunity as well. Yes. Thank you. I have a question. As you know, um, I raised a question at our last workshop. <clears throat> but I have a question, of Maureen. If a, if a uh, developer came in here and did a subdivision <clears throat> and ended up with a lot of 7,500 to 10,000 square foot lots, would this also mean that those all had to be affordable housing? Um, you might remember the Blueberry Ridge subdivision which actually had lots, the, the cluster, the open space zoning provisions or the cluster provisions in the RC district allow lots as small as 7,500 square feet. Right. So a developer would not be required to make every lot that's less than 10,000 square feet affordable. Conversely, any developer would be required to meet the mandatory affordable housing provisions which require that either 5% of the lots be made affordable to low-income families or 10% be affordable to moderate-income families. So they wouldn't have to make every lot affordable, but they are subject to those other provisions which would require some affordability. If it's a cluster. If it's a cluster in the RC so district. The if, RC but if district. you're a cluster in any other district, you would have larger lots, but you would still be required to make a portion affordable. So. Right. And if you're only developing one lot, it would have to be affordable. Right. Under, your, under this proposal, if you're not creating a new subdivision, if you just have an existing lot, um, any lot that's less than 10,000 square feet in size is not buildable today. Right. You cannot build on it. Right. This provision would allow lots that are between 7,500 and 10,000 to be buildable, but you could only build affordable houses on them. Right. Barbara. You know, the one, the one thing we didn't decide, do we mean affordable for moderate income or affordable for low income? We never designated that. I mean, I, I would certainly be willing to go with moderate income affordability. I believe at the workshop you raised that issue and the decision was made to let the lot owner decide which one they wanted to go with. Thank you. <clears throat> well, that's, that's a good point. Yes, Dave. I, I guess... Um, I did voice my opinion at the workshop, and uh, I don't think I'll be against sending this on to a public hearing because I think it'll probably be discussed, but I'm really not in favor, and I go on record tonight saying I'm really not in favor of restricting a single landowner to uh, have to comply with an affordable housing and for a couple of reasons, but I think the main reason is that it, it puts a unnecessary restriction on, on the landowner to get the best return on his investment being that it's a you know it's an opportunity for them to recapture or, or, or sell a lot and I also think it adds a burden on uh, policing the issue and I don't think it's a necessary ad, it's necessary to add that to our government especially in the times when we're concerned about costs so that's my position but I'm not against that moving it ahead here, and I just want to go on record. Okay. Um, okay, well, as we talked about the workshop, I guess my, my opinion's a little different. That given the fact that there already is a restriction on developing the lot, which right now is you can't develop it at all, um, we are offering the ability to develop it uh, so long as it's developed under the affordable housing standard. So there are always going to be restrictions. We have lots of them, um, but I think this is a reasonable compromise. But it would be interesting to hear what people have to say at the public hearing, and I hope people come. 
We have a motion. Barbara. Motion for the board to consider be it ordered that based on the materials and facts presented, the undersized lots amendments are tabled to the January 18th, 2005 regular meeting of the planning board, at which time a public hearing shall be held. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Okay, it's unanimous. Okay, well, before we close the meeting, I think we would be remiss in not recognizing that this is Mr. Cotter's last meeting. He's had a very long and distinguished career on the planning board. I remember as him as uh, an excellent chair and also a uh, valuable member of the planning board. And I speak for everyone to say that he will be missed. And thank you for your service and insight, Peter, and good luck. Thank you, John. Motion to adjourn? May I make a motion to adjourn, please? <laughs> we'll be your last one. Go ahead. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? All right. We're adjourned.